What's up, guys? Alex Kazor from SteelersDepot.com back with another episode of Chalk Talk. Missed last week because of spring break, so I apologize for that, but we are back here. Uh, and, and, and today, uh, we're going to actually be talking to the whiteboard today for basically all the time, I think. I don't know if I'm going to be able to throw in any pictures. Uh, I just apologize in advance. A little rush doing this video, trying to click my thoughts here last second, so I might jump off, off screen once or twice just to check some of my notes that I made. Uh, but today, I want to talk about, because there was a comment in my last video, and, and there was some good discussion about it, uh, but I want to go a little further into it. Uh, about coverages and what some of the basic coverages you'll see in the NFL is. And, and obviously they're very complex, really as complex as, as offenses are today, which we know is, is incredibly complex. But I want to go over just some of the basic concepts of coverages you'll see uh, on every Sunday uh, that every team will run, regardless of really what they are philosophically in terms of their base. Um, so the basic types of coverages, you have cover one, cover two, cover three, cover four. You guys know that by now. Uh, but I want to go over just a brief overview of kind of what they are, just some real quick you know, write-ups here. Uh, on the whiteboard. So we're going to start with cover one. Uh, you know, oftentimes we're going to have our free safety middle of the field. We have our two corners, and if we have our receivers here who are all named, label uh, number one on each side. The cornerbacks are in man to man with the free safety playing the deep middle. And then usually you have your strong safety down and robber coverage. And what I mean by robber, usually he's, he's reading either the routes or he's reading the quarterback's eyes. And so he's break, making his decision based off of that. He's not really in man, man coverage on somebody. So that's your basic of cover one if you want to add to a little bit more of what linebackers are. Usually you have curl flat here for your outside linebackers. If you have your inside linebackers, uh, that might be playing more hook zones as well, just to kind of help uh, take away each zone that a passing offense uh, is looking to attack. So that's basics of cover one. Uh, again, man coverage on the outside. Uh, shading, I've seen different ways uh, in terms of inside versus outside shade. I've always thought of they had an inside shade in cover one to kind of force the receiver to the boundary, play to the sideline, use the sideline as help. Um, but I've heard different things as well uh, over the times of, of reading different people's opinions. Cover two now. We're going to have a two high shell with the free safety and strong safety and then both cornerbacks. And the basics of this, if you go real, real back, Bud Carson steals even a corner to help really create the cover two, Tampa two. Um, the strong safety and free safety both have the deep half. And then the cornerbacks in a true, I guess, cover two are going to be rolled up, playing the flat, rerouting, jamming at the line, throwing off the timing of the route, um, and then playing the flat. And in the Tampa two, uh, remember Tampa Bay uh, obviously made that, uh, you know, that really big jump. Uh, the middle linebacker usually has a lot of depth, so you need a really athletic Mike linebacker uh, who can get 15 to 20 yards of depth uh, to cover that deep middle. That's in the more extreme, I guess, true Tampa 2 that you think of. So there's cover 2, the basics of it. Uh, cover 3 is basically like cover 1, uh, but obviously cover 3 is a zone coverage as opposed to cover 1, which is man-to-man. -man. So instead of the corners playing man-to-man, -man, they're going to have the deep third responsibility, same with the free safety. So the field gets divided into thirds, and each Deep defensive back gets a third, and again, you probably get that strong safety either on a blitz and down in the box and run support and, and really playing against robber coverage. Um, though, again, concepts are very, these are the basics of it. Uh, defenses are very complex today. And then in cover four, the final one, before we break things uh, down a little bit further. Again, cover four, two high shell. And again, the field now divided into four quadrants, where you're going to have the corner, free safety, strong safety in the other corner, each are responsible for a quarter of the field. And that's what you have in cover four. All right, so I want to break this down just a little bit farther. And, and I want to start by uh, showing how coverages pre-snap and post-snap can change uh, you know, in terms of what they look like pre-snap to what they are post-snap. It's some of the tells you might have along with that. So let's draw up a cover two shell. Let's have the free safety and the strong safety and then each cornerback. So we have our shell here. Now this might look like cover two, where you think, okay, the corner's gonna be playing rolled up, uh, curl flat, uh, or, or you know, playing, you know, rerouting, jamming, and, and playing the flat, and you have your free safety, your strong safety uh, in the deep half. Uh, but let's, one tell that I've you know, seen and read over time, let's have a, let's introduce an offensive player. Let's give me just a wide tight end, and uh, let me actually move this corner over. So like I said, trying to do things on the fly a little bit. Uh, let's put, uh, a weak, or let's put the, the, I guess it can be the strong side linebacker, though let's not get too caught up in, in the nomenclature, uh, who's on the outside, outside shade of the end man on the line of scrimmage. If he's stacked, if this strong side linebacker is stacked or, or offline, that end man on the line of scrimmage, um, this is a strong indication that he has 
flat responsibility and he has curl flat. And so what that means is that he's, this corner here does not have flat responsibility because they're both not going to have it. Um, that's a tell. So typically what this means is you're going to get uh, a, an inversion here post snap where this strong safety might rotate down and all of a sudden looks like cover two becomes cover three. And now the corner, the free safety and the other corner are now playing the third. So that's kind of a tell. If he's stacked or if he's off uh, an outside shade uh, of the edmund on the line, there's uh, a strong indication that it's going to be uh, not cover two and it's going to become something else. So that's why you know the, the first read you have as a quarterback off the snap, you're reading the safety seam where they go because they help dictate what the coverage is. Uh, we'll go do cover three now, or cover one. And, and one thing I want to focus on is being able to tell the difference between where's your strong safety at? Because again, you're reading the safeties. You want to see what the coverage is going to be that really starts with your safeties. Because um, again, pre-snap shell, defenses want to fool you. They want to think you, make you think it's something else. Um, then you have that thought. You kind of already have a you know, determination of where you're going to go with the football. And all of a sudden, they change it on you. And that's how you create turnovers as a defense. Uh, so basically, if this is uh, the strong safety has less or has more depth, excuse me, uh, than the corner, uh, this is going to be cloud coverage where he's going to have the deep half and the corner is going to be played up. But let's say it's the other way. Let's say if the strong safety has less depth than the corner, that's what we call sky coverage, cover three sky, where the corner now has the deep third and the strong safety is going to be playing the flat. Pretty simple, pretty intuitive, but something else to, to point out. So strong safety, his depth in relation to the cornerback, if that corner is soft or not, um, is going to help tell you what the coverage is. One last thing I want to get into today, don't want to make this video too long and ramble more than I think I already have. Uh, I want to talk about, just touch on a little bit of pattern reading. I know we've talked about that a lot before I, I've said, and I still am learning about it uh, because it, it is extremely complex, and pattern reading, if you're not familiar with, um, it is coverage that's based off of the routes of the receivers. There's no definite man or zone. Uh, the coverages are all based off of uh, the routes of the receiver. So it becomes man, but you don't know who you're going to have until you start seeing the routes. And these are in these two and three wide receiver surfaces where the route combinations are so great, um, you're not going to have you know, true man coverage where it's easy to get picked and get lost and make mental mistakes. Um, so the way this works, we'll draw this up here. Let's draw up, uh, let's draw up a cover two shell. We'll put the free safety here as well just to help represent that. We're going to draw two offensive players. So again, I'm going to number, you read outside in, the number one receiver down here, and then the number two down here off the line. Um, now this is true cover two. Let's just say that's the call. The corner will be playing roll down, strong safety, the deep half. You guys know that by now. Um, but the issue here is whenever you introduce that second offensive player, if that was the coverage, and, and let's say the offense runs this, how do you attack it? How do you defend it? Let's say that number one and number two are both running vertical routes. Well, that corner is playing flat, then that strong safety is in a lose-lose because he can't cover both vertical routes. And if it's a divide route, let's say the number two is running a post, and you have number one on a vertical, a straight nine route, this strong safety is in a lose-lose. He's in no man's land. So how do you defend that? Well, we have to give that corner some flexibility now. He can't be a rigid, he's going to be playing flat the whole way through. So we'll draw it up again. Again, talking about some pattern reading. This corner is going to be reading two to one. So off the snap, his eyes dart to number two, and he's going to be reading his route. If number two goes vertical, like we showed before, his eyes then come to number one. If number one is vertical as well, this corner, instead of playing flat, now has the deep third, and he's carrying number one to help that strong safety, because the strong safety can't attack and cover both number one and number two. So that's what his read is. His read is two. If he reads vertical, his eyes now come to one, and one helps dictate the coverage. If one is vertical as well, then the corner is vertical, and he's carrying it. If that corner breaks off, and let's say he's running a quick curl or an out route or something like that, uh, that corner now can play the flat and let the strong safety have number two, because there's only one man route to be responsible for, and the strong safety is able to cover that. Uh, we'll draw it up again. So if now if number two, let's say number two has an in-breaking route, now that corner is going to be playing flat. Because we're, even if that number one is vertical, now the strong safety is responsible for number one, and you have it covered. And now the corner is waiting for any routes to come to him. Um, so that's the only difference. Again, if, and if number two is running an out route, and again, reading two to one, that corner now is flat. Now the corner is responsible for number two. The strong safety is responsible for number one. So you guys see how those things change based off of coverages? The corner can be responsible for two or number one. The strong safety can be responsible for two or number one. 
Uh, the corner might not have number two at all. If it's number two comes an in route, that's an under call. Now a linebacker has a responsibility for that. Number one could be playing vertical. Now the corner isn't responsible for number one or number two. He's responsible for anything, a, a back leaking into the flat, playing the flat, you know, just, he, he's now in his flat reading curl flat. Uh, and that's his job, and strong safety has uh, number one in this case. So that's kind of just a, a look into some of the basic coverages. I want to do a video that's more dedicated to pattern reading. I found some old notes I had on it um, that I think could be really helpful. I want to look over those a little bit more, be a little bit more comfortable with it before I go to the board with it. Uh, but I know we had the question about some of the basic coverages. Uh, I wanted to go over the basic ones and go a little bit more in depth and a couple just little, little keys that help you know, indicate pre-snap what coverages are because that's critical for a quarterback, first thing you look for. Um, and, and some of the, a little bit of the pattern reading as well, just to show that there's that extra layer that's a lot more complex. Defenses can't be vanilla. They have to match the complexity that offenses has because we know how dangerous and potent offenses can be. And, and they have to match that now, and that's what every NFL team does. Pattern reading become very common in the NFL. College is starting to pick up more. Uh, Alabama, Nick Saban said it before, uh, he pattern reads better and more often. Uh, than really anybody else in college football. So you always know an Alabama cornerback or a defensive back is smart and, uh, and knows how to pattern read, pattern read excuse me, because that's what Nick Saban preaches. Hope this guy's helped. I uh, hope this uh, helped you guys out. I'm stumbling my words, so I'll wrap this video up now. If you guys have any comments, questions, things you want to see in the next video, please drop us a comment uh, on this post or another one as well. Hit me up on Twitter uh, if you want to as well. And as always, thank you guys for watching here on SteelersDepot.com.